One more, and I think I'm done. So I am, in a way, playing catch up because I've had a busy last week and then a busy weekend as I went back to work. So this next video is going to be me talking from the experience of a security guard. And yes, this is another video on the Grand Rapids shooting. Um, Patrick LaLoya and Officer Sure. So, we're going to go over two very small articles. And you can tell when you're dealing with ignorant and stupid people and then race baiters and grifters. Let me show you what I mean. So, not this one, do this one first. Grand Rapids residents address commissioners on the LaLoya shooting police funding. Oh yeah, they're calling to defund the police, which I'm going to tell you why that is a bad freaking idea and has a ripple effect. Increase in crime is obvious, but there is a sector that nobody thinks about because not a lot of people talk about or have experience with. Grand Rapids Mitch, people who are frustrated with the shooting of Patrick LaLoya as well as people who support police, spoke out before the Grand Rapids City Commission Tuesday evening, and I imagine these are people who have no experience, no background in PD, security, or anything in between of that nature. Um, law professors do not count. I'm sorry, unless you have been a police officer, some form of security guard, or somewhere in between, your profession does not count because you have not put, you have not been put in dangerous situations or had to deal with unpredictable and dangerous individuals. So, no. The city commission held a special meeting that featured a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2023 city budget. Under the proposal, the budget for the Grand Rapids Police Department, GRPD, would account for 34.1% of the 163,392,874. Oh, excuse me. As you can tell, it's been a while for <laughs> high school. I do believe I read that right. 163. Yeah, anyway, I know. Stupid moment. General operating fund. But during the meeting, some community members said that they are upset about the police funding because of course they're because they don't know any better and they're just going to go full of their emotions. and. Mm. These community members also expressed frustration of the shooting Death of a lawyer. Again, ignorant people trying to put their two cents on something that they have no experience with, nor know anything about with the procedure and among other things. And I am so sick and tired of this. I'm not a cop, obviously, as I've said in my other two videos. I've never had to physically wrestle somebody to the ground, thank God. I do not want to. It's against my company's policy to do so. But holy crap, I have dealt with some cantankerous individuals and... Hmm. I'm ashamed of all of you. I'm ashamed of the blood in your hands that I'm paying for. I'm ashamed of Chase Winstrom, one man told commissioners. I'm ashamed that my dollars are paying at 90000 to a man who executed a man on the street. Wasn't an execution. I hate the ignorance of people. I really, really do. Especially when it's about situations like this. And I understand there are bad cops. Believe me, I've seen the auditor videos before. Yes, there are bad eggs. Officer Sher is not one of them. He does not have a rap sheet as it was dug into and revealed that he had no write-ups, um, he had no disciplinary action on his police record of being a police officer. For not having the right license plate, are you kidding me? Are you getting me? It wasn't over the license plate, you damn idiot! He did not get shot for having a stolen plate or the wrong license plate on his car. Oh, sheep. I can't stand sheep, especially emotional ones. They're referring to April 4th when the police department said Officer Christopher Schur pulled the 26th row lawyer over for a license plate violation. Dash and body cam video show Schur asking the lawyer for identification when the lawyer began to walk away, no, run away, 
Sure can be heard yelling, or excuse me, telling the lawyer to stop. As the officer put his hands on the lawyer, a brief struggle took place before the lawyer ran away on foot. Let me read that again. As the officer put his hands on the lawyer, a brief struggle took place before the lawyer ran away. No, the lawyer ran away first. Don't, don't, oh, don't try to twist this. The lawyer ran away first. No. Sure, then tackled the lawyer to the ground where another struggle ensued according to the body cam footage. Police said it appeared the lawyer had his hand on the officer's stun gun, taser, taser with a stun gun feature. During the struggle, the, the taser, they don't even know the difference between a stun gun and, oh my, oh my word. Um, the taser deployed twice, but no one was hit. Oh boy. Sorry about that. Phone call. Forgot to mute my phone. Let's pick up where we left off. A video from a cell phone showed the officer yelling, Drop the taser, not the stun gun, from the frickin' difference, while he was on top of the lawyer before shooting the lawyer in the back of his head, killing him. That single gunshot not only took Patrick's life, but it also took a piece of his family and his loved ones with him. A woman said before the commissioners during Tuesday's meeting, The lawyer had made his decision to not only drink, but to drive and to wrestle a police officer to the ground trying to get a hold of a deadly tool. At that point, he threw his life out the window. Now, it is tragic the way that it ended, but these things do happen. Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker said he is still waiting for key evidence in order to decide whether to charge sure. Thank you, some sense. In the meantime, the officer remains on paid administrative leave. Some community members were so frustrated they targeted the homes of the commissioners because that's going to solve your issues. That's going to get you idiots wrapped up with the police. A brick wrapped in a newspaper article about the lawyer's desk with the message, there's blood on your hands, was found next to a commissioner's mailbox. In addition, the phrase defund GRPD. I'm going to explain in a minute why it is a bad idea, and we've already seen why that's a bad idea, but I'm going to talk about that from a security guard's perspective. Give me a minute, we're going to finish this article, and then I'm going to go into that. With spray painted onto several commissioners' driveways, the police department said officers were investigating. Well, I understand people's frustration and anger acts of violence and vandalism doesn't get us to just outcomes. Grand Rapids Mayor Rosalind Bliss said in a statement, I'm disappointed in these most recent incidents of vandalism. Social activism is a valuable part of our democracy, but targeted vandalism designed to intimidate is not. The challenges confronting our city require respectful engagement so that we can reach thoughtful solutions. Intentional vandalism is an empty response to the important issues we face. During Tuesday night's meeting, some community members defended GRPD. The police is doing the best they can, and man said, yes. You see, when you remove authority from my home, you destroy the family. Another speaker said, when you remove authority from a nation, you did decimate a culture. Yes, and when you remove authority from our police, you loose evil on our streets. Yes. So, because we do have one more article, but real quick, when you call for the defunding of police as a security guard because you guys have already seen crime spikes in multiple cities. You've had people had their cars stolen and these are the same big idiots who call to defund the police. And then you had cities, I believe, was it Minnesota or Michigan that saw crime rate spike and went, oh, hey, wait a minute. Maybe we should give money back to our police force. And I understand there are bad eggs, but not every single officer is a demon nor are they out to shoot people, or are they power hungry. So, but when you call for the defunding the police, let me introduce you to the security guard side of that. Say for example, I, I'm on patrol. I'm doing my own district and I get a call for, I don't know, somebody with the gun, somebody breaking into one of the apartments at an apartment complex. I'm patrolling. I'm not saying that this is a call I legitimately have gotten. This is a scenario. And I call my supervisor. Supervisor tells me to call PD right away to meet me on site because I am unarmed. 
I call PD. It is a 911 because that is a report of an active um, possible shooter or an active burglar, crime in progress. And um, I get told, oh, well, we're going to have one as soon as possible, even though it's a 911 emergency. So I go out there and the police aren't there yet because they're short staff, because they have to deal with more severe 911 calls. Do you see where this is going? Give you another example. And this is actually a scenario that did happen. I talked about how I've had to deal with street racers before at my previous security company, or rather working for my previous security company, employer. Because this PD was understaffed, they had to pull the surrounding PD, not to mention get a subcontracted armed security force to help them out. So the property that my previous employer had to continuously try to kick off and keep off street racers, and for those of you who have never dealt with street racers at a warehouse before, they break things, they constantly leave glass and trash, and if they see a security guard, because they do this when you're driving in their area, the interstate, whatever, they try to mess with your car. They act like they will ram you. The police have said that these street racers have tried to ram them, and so when they're short staff, that creates an issue for not only the property managers, but for us security guards, because we're expert witnesses. We patrol, observe, and report, but we can't physically do anything about the street racers, so that leaves the liability and potential for there to be property damage. Somebody could get killed during these shenanigans because street racers are dangerous. There is no freaking joke. These guys are bastards. So that's just an example. When you guys, when you have idiots who don't have experience with this stuff, call for the defund of the police. Not only are you making communities unsafe, you are also having the other side effect of that with security jobs security companies not being able to do their jobs effectively or get help when we freaking need it. None of you idiots get this. And for those of you who have done security or understand PD or support the police and security guards in general, thank you. Thank you. Because not everybody gets this. And it's too much. It's emotional bait. Let me take you to the other article because I... This is a race baiter... And Grifter, this is the lawyer for uh, Patrick LaLoya's family. LaLoya family attorney Ben Krupp demands charges against GRPD officer by May 25th. Again, this guy has no experience, you can tell, with being a police officer or anything of the like. He just, he is race baiting and grifting off the situation like a slime ball lawyer he is. The Kent County prosecutor is waiting on the manufacturer's report from the GRPD officer's body camera and taser before he'll make a decision. <gasps> oh! I said it? I, okay, let me, let me read that. Did you guys understand that? The Kent County prosecutor is waiting on the manufacturer's report from the GRPD officer's body camera and the taser before he'll make a decision on the case. Yes! Oh my god, they're gonna dissect the taser. Okay, for those of you who don't realize how big this is, as I said in my very first video, if that taser was still lethal, which we went over the type of model, if not a very similar model, it had a stun gun feature. It is a taser, two cartridges, that means two shots only, and then once the cartridges are spent, you have to reload the taser. It has a stun gun feature, which means it's a pain compliance tool and can be used to momentarily cripple somebody. Oh my god, yes, we have somebody with brains, we have somebody with common sense. Oh, thank god. <laughs> And the body camera, which again, we've talked about the, uh, and I do need to make a small correction here because I got the name of the camera wrong. I know which ones I was talking about, but got the name wrong. I called it originally a T9. No, it is either going to be 
Most PD are either seen with what's called an axon 2 or an axon 3. Now let me bring you a, another tip about these particular body cams. These are not something you can get from walmart.com. You cannot get these from Amazon. You have to go to axon the website itself and you have to request one. These are very expensive body cams ranging from 2000 to 5 or excuse me 5000 a body cam. The reason why I know this is because my previous security company used them. And as sensitive as they were, they were freaking awesome. And the security company I'm working for now has to use cheaper ones, which is fine. I've got, I'm not saying just because it's cheaper, it's bad. That's not what I'm saying. But a lot of police officers do use the Axon 2 or the Axon 3. And like I said, my previous security company used them. So that's why I'm familiar with them and can pick them out. So... Oh my gosh, so because yeah, they're trying to figure out why this um, axon, and I don't know if it was two or three, got dislodged from the chest. As I said, in order to put the axon two or axon three, you have a chest plate right here. Now, there is not a clip, because if you um, see other chest plates, they have a clip on the back of the uh, body cam that clips onto the thing. With the axon two and the axon three, you, it, there's like a little key looking thing and what you do is you place it sideways like this to line up with the hole in the chest plate and you turn up right. So it is, in my opinion, because they were wrestling because they kept rubbing up against that camera and I'm surprised I didn't turn it off because of how sensitive that big button is. I mean, it was to the point to where I, when I was on patrol, like you can tell when it came on because it vibrated and you can turn off the sound. So I'm surprised that the body cam itself didn't get shut off because of the sensitivity of that big button. Again, though, with the right uh, momentum and force rubbing, you can easily twist that sucker off if you're wrestling somebody to the ground just because of the way it connected to the chest plate. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited because, yes, I talked about this. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that, that, that makes me so happy. Not because... It's not about me being right, but it's because, like, oh, my gosh, you have somebody who's going to dissect the taser, which is so freaking important because I also said, because I even spoke to a superior about this, of my current security company, that if the taser was no longer lethal, meaning the two cartridges were spent and it did not have a stun gun feature, Officer Sure would be in deep shit for using excessive force and what he would have what he did would have been illegal. But because of that stunt gun feature, again, being a pain compliance tool, I cannot express this enough. I cannot say this enough. He was justified. Let's continue. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Oh, we got a smart person. Yay. Grand Rapids, uh, da, 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 da. Patrick Lavoie was shot and killed by Grand Rapids Police Department Officer Christopher Schroeder on April 4th after a struggle summing from a traffic stop. Since then, the Michigan police MSP has been conducting an inv excuse me, investigation into the officer-involved shooting, but has yet to return the completed results to the Kent County Prosecution's office. They're probably checking um, everything, dotting their I's and crossing their T's. They're still waiting to receive two pieces of evidence. The manufacturer's report from GRPD, officer's body camera and taser. Oh my gosh, yes, they, okay. So the Michigan... State police are also, yes, thank God. Attorney Ben Krupp, who is re representing the Loya family, has demanded that GRPD officer be charged in the shooting and the results of MSP's investigation be released. They don't have all their information, you race baiting, grifting piece of shit. On Friday, Krupp tweeted Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan officer Christopher Sherb must be charged for Patrick Lowry's death. His officer killed the 26 year old while he was on the ground facing away from the officer. We're going to completely neglect that he was still had in his hand a deadly freaking weapon. <clears throat> Kent County prosecutor Chris Becker said he has received a partial report from MSP but is waiting to review the case until he receives the final elements of the investigation. Yes. Okay. Krupp has now asked his Twitter followers to join him in demanding charges be filed against Officer Sure by Becker's office. 
The Greater Grand Rapids branch of the NAACP has also shared demands in regards to the investigation into the fatal shooting of Patrick Lula. So it is no longer weird to the point where the police, if they shoot somebody, they're demons, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the facts are, no matter what happened, no matter the decision the person made, and it's total matter of bullshit. In late April, they demanded Becker arrest, uh, recuse himself from the case and that Michigan Attorney General Dan Nesso should take up the case and say, oh, because... Oh, I'm kind of curious just because is it the Michigan Attorney General won't look at all the facts addressed, run off of emotion, and Becker is actually taking the time to get all of the pieces on the table so he could properly put the puzzle together and see the actual picture more than the distorted facts that people are been putting out and twisting or just rather ignoring. Um, so... Yeah, they also demanded that officers sure be immediately fired and barred from serving as an officer in Michigan. So they're trying to intimidate, like, oh, well, we want our person to charge sure because we know she will. Kind of makes me curious. Actually, let's do this because I swear I've seen this name before. American lawyer. <laughs> Hmm. So, yeah, it sounds like she's kind of left-leaning to fight against gun violence. Michigan AG refuses draconian 1931 abortion law. She will refuse to enforce the state's abortion law ban. So, no wonder, no wonder people want her taking charge of the uh, overall investigation. Hmm, that wasn't hard to uncover. Dear God. In the last few weeks, Grand Rapids City Commission meetings have been twice cut short by activists demanding justice for Patrick Lalloy, even though he possibly stole someone's car, was drunk driving, decided to wrestle a police officer, became unpredictable, was dangerous, and decided to reach for the police officer's dangerous tool, which was still lethal because it had a stun gun, which is a pain-compliant tool, which could have crippled the officer. At that point, the lawyer could have taken off with the officer's gun, possibly killing the officer in the head. I do digress, though. So, <laughs> as you can see... Common sense is in this case, thank God, and I, again, I am glad in a way that I am learning about this stuff and the fact that they're going to dissect the taser because I said the defense and the prosecution should hone in on the taser. Oh, this is just, to me, this is like, oh, hey. I'm learning something new, and it's I'm. It's actually kind of cool to be able to dissect and break this down, and I am discovering that my current employment status as a security guard overnight, I actually want to grow in. Um, so this video has been a bit long, but I'm hoping justice and common sense prevail. And the hell with that Michigan GA, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, no wonder why they want her to take over. She wanted to look at everything and just the, because I know the other stuff had to do with abortion laws, but that tells me all I need to know. Hmm. So, with all that being said, I hope for progress continues and that Officer Schur and the GRPD is cleared because Schur was justified. And you actually have Becker, who seems to be a man of common sense thus far, waiting for all of the pieces in context so he can make an educated decision from there and have the proper knowledge and insight to do so. That is how it should be done, and I'm hoping he continues to go that route. With that further said, I will see you guys in the next one, and I do believe this to be my last video for the night. Have a good one.